right, so we're back in New Jersey. Trip was good, got to spend some time with the grandparents. It was nice and relaxing, got a tan, mostly sunburned. Just got some very good news, want to share it with you. Uh, my last video was about how I got accepted to basically join this program with the guy Dan Di Piazza as one of his mentor, or mentees, he'd mentor me, and uh, I was thinking about it, right? It's a great opportunity for me. The only hesitation I had towards it was money. And normally, you know, I would be like, okay, that not a problem right now, but here's where the good news comes in. The test run I've been, I've been doing with the virtual real estate company, right? It was me, and this is so awesome, right? It was me versus uh, someone else, right? Running their Facebook, Instagram ads. We had a one month basically competition where we both used a thousand dollars ad spend to see who the company wanted to work with long term. Just got an email, it's 1.30, March 5th. Hey Nick, I'm excited to say that we'd like to move forward with a long-term contract with you on finalizing things with the other trial ad manager and so that you'll be our sole Facebook ads manager. I won the competition, whatever you wanna call it, so I'm signing on with this company for a six-month deal, which is good because that's, you know, I needed the finances right now in order to be able to invest back into my business because it's also tax season. You gotta remember this is my first year as a freelancer, as an independent contractor, right? I have all these 1099s coming my way from the different clients I've worked with and YouTube and all this different revenue, and now that the year's over, my grandpa's an accountant, so I brought all my tax stuff to him. I'm gonna have to pay taxes this year, right? And it's, it's something that you have to kind of calculate into the money because when these clients pay you, they don't take taxes out, obviously. It's just a 1099. They give you the full revenue and you are and you have to keep track of that and pay taxes when that comes around. So I am going to have to pay a few thousand dollars in taxes this year. I'm not sure how much it's going to be, but I also have business expenses that I can write off and I was working with my grandpa to make sure you know I took the full amount in order to do so. So I have the taxes coming off, but I just signed with this long-term deal, which means that I will have more than enough money to invest into this mentor and invest into other marketing and other things that I I've been looking to invest into with my business. So that was huge. I just answered the mentor back about an hour ago and I was waiting on it because one, I didn't know how much I was gonna have to pay in taxes. Two, I didn't know if I was gonna be the, the one that, that, that they chose to run with long term. You know, there's a few other things kind of wrestling around that I didn't know about finance wise before I can make a commitment to it and now I can. The other awesome part about this is this virtual real estate company, it was two people competing, not two people, it was me versus a media agency, a marketing agency. That makes me feel so good because you look at me, I'm just a kid doing this from my house versus a marketing agency with not unlimited resources, but they're, they're a company, they're a real company, right? And I just beat them out. So it's just like, you think about it and there's just so much bullshit that goes into anything. This goes for like anything. Everything looks good on the outside, right? There's so many things you can do. There's so many different ways you can make yourself look good, but at the end, you have to be good at your craft and you have to be able to get results and you have to be able to talk with the clients one-on-one, -on -one, be a people person and, and have all these different attributes that really set you apart from the rest. And there's so many people that waste their time on creating a business, getting business cards, making sure they have all the right equipment making sure this that and the other thing and then you have me over here it's just raw and I'm just kind of grinding away by myself I have notebooks and and all this shit going around and it's just me here I don't have the resources of a marketing agency I don't have multiple people to bounce ideas off of but I still out hustle them this company they're like we want to see if we'd rather go with an agency or would we rather go with a, a solopreneur a freelancer an entrepreneur there's pros and cons to both of them while they have a lot more resources right they have their account manager and for the most people talk about oh we want to look at marketing agencies one they charge a shitload and two you're gonna have a kid like me on the account it's not like you're gonna have some guru running the ads for you it's someone like me and they think because they're an agency, they can charge three, four times the amount monthly. And that's not the case, especially like you're seeing it here right now. With that being said, right, they do have multiple resources, other employees that they can work with. Obviously, they just they just have a lot more resources. But me, as an entrepreneur, I'm working seven days a week. You have access to me. You can text me. You can email me at 9 p.m. And I'm going to get back to you at 9 30, 10 o'clock. If you're working with an agency, you know, they're, they're nine to five. If you put a kid like me on an account management position and they're one of your clients, like I'm not answering your email at six o'clock if I got off at five. For the most part, most people, that's how nine to five people who are employed think of it and they know like I'm, I'm more motivated right because this is my livelihood right if I don't perform I'm screwed like this is this is what I need and I need clients like this in order to keep going and in order to invest back into myself and things like that so it just feels really good that I can I can because it's like it's not like I hate like I want to stick it to the man but I just see so many agencies and marketing people and marketing places want to talk about how great they are but in the end it's someone like me that can outdo them and outperform them and beat them and it doesn't matter where you come from what college you went to just like 
what you put into it is what you get back. I don't know. I'm just mumbling, but it, it's just a good feeling. So that's that's cool. And I'm going to be working for the rest of the day. It's really time to grind now. So I just got done at the gym. Good workout, Titty Tuesday. You know, I had to hit the nipple muscles. I wanted to vent a little bit. Something I was just thinking about. Always coming to the gym. Fucking sweating like a pregnant woman. Now, I've been reading a lot lately about people who are kind of in similar situations to me. You know, and I have friends who I feel like if they wanted to could be great. I don't want to use the word entrepreneurs, but would be really good at building something for themselves and are very smart and like are creative and they have good ideas and things, but no one ever capitalizes on it they're they're some of those people that you know think of a good idea and then just stop going after it after like a week or or fucking 24 hours at that and uh i was thinking like what gets me motivated i think there's a huge problem within our i guess society i want to say i want to more so like my generation i guess anyone that's like five five or seven years either way of me i'm 25 so like 18 to 30 32 whatever i think the problem with society is there's a lack of you know, I mean, there's a lot of problems with our society. People posting pics with protein on Instagram. People with ridiculous motivational quotes on Instagram. Insta hoes. I mean, I guess all of our problems kind of revolve around Instagram, but that's another, that's another rant I can go on. Um, one of the problems I think our generation has, or I think society has, is a lack of motivation that's not, how do I say this? That's not corny. I think a lot of people, especially like my friends and the people that I hang around with, I think shy away from things or shy or don't get the proper motivation or fuel because they think a lot of it's corny and a lot of it's not practical. And that's, I think, the big takeaway, right? You go on like people's Instagram stories, you go down your feed and you look at these fucking stupid ass quotes and pictures people put up and they're like, oh yeah, like grind today, whatever with no practicality behind it, right? Put up a post on Instagram, whatever it is, right? It could be of you and your friend, it could be of a sunset. If you use the hashtag like entrepreneur, inspiration, inspirational quote or whatever whatever it is, within like two minutes, you're gonna have 20 random accounts liking you and, and liking your picture and commenting on it. And that's, that's, that's not actually them commenting on it, that's a software that people use to help them grow their social media in a corny ass way. First of all, that's corny number one. Um, they have like certain hashtags that they put out and they're like, and you, it's a software and you could basically be like, anyone that writes hashtag entrepreneur on a, on a picture, automatically go to that picture and write like double thumbs up emoji. And they think because they're commenting on it or they're liking a picture, people are going to like them back. That's why you see a lot of accounts with like 60,000 followers and, and 65,000 following, right, right? They have a big following, but it's all fucking fake people that will never turn into sales or never turn into conversions or people that you actually connect with. So what I think is a problem, like I said, is motivation that's corny, that doesn't that doesn't have practicality behind it. So like, like I saw something today, it's like, happiness is a choice. Like, okay, great, sick quote, but like, if you're not, I, I don't, if you're not able to explain the meaning of that quote realistically, then you're a fucking cornball. Like, I, I agree that happiness is a choice, but it's not in the way that most people think about it, right? It's not like you don't wake up and you're not like, most people will be like, oh, like shut up, like it's not a choice. Like if happiness was a choice, I would wake up and be like, yep, I wanna be happy today, give me a million dollars. Or nope, I don't wanna be happy today. Like that's, that's not what that's referencing. It means like you wake up each day and you, you know, you have to decide. It's all about self-awareness, first of all. Motivation, I think, comes from self-awareness and knowing what you want and being practical about it. Choosing happiness means choosing a path to like follow the things you're passionate about and, and your hobbies and stuff. It's not about like, if you think money is gonna lead you to happiness, you're in for a terrible long life. I'll put it that way now. If you can't find a way to make your life integrated with what you do, with work, with monetization and helping people, then it's gonna be a pretty long, miserable life. And that's fine. If you're happy with your job and you're happy with what you're doing, that's fine. But like happiness is a choice in the sense that you can wake up and work towards what you want. And you have to realize that the goal is not the happiness. The, the process is the happiness. It's like you grinding after everything. You hear people say, and this is such a turnoff for a lot of people that I know that w I would like to see, like I would support my friends who would start their own thing or their own business or their own blog even, like anything small like that. I would support them. I think they get turned off by the fact that people are always like, you need to work so hard with nothing, <clears throat> no guarantee of return, and you're not getting anything back for the first two, three, four, five years. If I'm hearing that and if I've never started anything and that's like, I'm scared to start and then I hear that, I'm like, 
I do that's like too much it's too much work and everything but you have to realize that like there are these little motivational cues along the way and it's it's subjective to what you're doing it might be the first person that paid you a hundred dollars for your work right if you're a freelancer it might be your first 100 followers or your first 100 subscribers your first thousand mark whatever it is right those are little mo motivational cues that's the most pure form of motivation is those little bumps that keep you going and along the way right along those two three four five years when you can make that a lifestyle those are the things that are going to keep you going even if there's not like you ain't going to get a plaque you're not set for life off a hundred dollars but you're like holy shit there's no better feeling than working hard at something and then really you know the market is the market is the market they either want your shit or they don't want your shit no matter who you are where you're coming from like as soon as someone invests into you if someone follows you you know they're using their time and their lives to spend time with you or they're paying money to get whatever you're giving them whether it's information or whether you're giving them a service or a product like that's so much motivation and that should be like that's the practicality of it like you will have to work very hard for a long time but along the way there are these little self motivational factors that will keep you going and that's for people who want to start something but they they think that the long game like the work they have to put in for so many years is going to be too hard like that's the process that's the shit you have to enjoy along the way and that i, I tell you that that is so worth it and the thing is if you are doing something that you're happy about and you're passionate about you'll have no problem putting in the work and the time and as soon as you see a little bit of return on that that first hundred dollars I can tell you this you're gonna be as happy about that first paying client that first hundred dollars as you will when you hit the million dollar mark you know what I mean like you might you might be standing there but sitting there behind your phone or your computer and be like you're a fucking idiot no I'm not like I'll be much happier with the, the million dollars but that first gratification of knowing that someone like they, that the work you're putting in is worth this much to someone and they care about what you're doing and what you have to say is equally worth the money in the long run. So that's what I have to say. If you're thinking about starting something and you're nervous about maybe like it being too much work or too much of a long game, you got to realize that there are little motivational things along the way that are awesome and that will keep you driven, right? If someone buys your shit, you're like, holy shit, let's go. Next time I want to sell it for you know, $20 more. Next, I want to sell two next week instead of one that I sold this week, right? And that'll keep pushing you. And before you know it, you're going to become resourceful and you're going to, you're going to teach yourself how to do different things, right? You're going to teach yourself marketing. You're going to teach yourself social media. You're going to teach yourself sales, uh, sales skills and sales traits that you never thought you had. But now that you're putting yourself in a position that you're passionate about and you're like, yeah, I want to sell my shit. Like I'm going to be able to preach to someone about a product that I care about. And that's when you hear a lot of people talk about like, you know, if you're a salesman and you're selling something that you don't believe in, it's very hard to sell because people can read the passion. You know, they can, they, they can feel the passion behind it. If you developed your own product line or your own service or something and you believe that you're good at it and you're pitching it to someone and you're selling it to someone, that belief, you know, belief is not something you could just like be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to believe in myself now. It's like something you have. It's inherent. It's either something that you have or you don't. Like you believe in what you're selling or you don't. And if you do, that's so natural and that comes off. And I think that's why I've been successful in like I would not be good in a sales position. If you put me in a sales position for like indeed.com or like godaddy.com and I had to sell website hosting or whatever to cold calling people, I'd be shitty at it. But you let me get in a room with someone about Facebook or Instagram advertising, something I'm passionate about, and I tell them why I believe it's so good overall for their business and what, how I can help them do it, like they're gonna feel the passion coming from me and that is like 50% of the battle, if not more. You know, I just think that like the lack of motivation comes from these unrealistic fucking stupid Instagram quotes and these things you see everywhere and this impractical advice. So I always say, listen, I'm giving you practical advice right now. It's, it, it's starting is very hard, but once you get going and once you get a little bit of the ball rolling, you will be so like fired up and you'll be so happy about what you're doing that like one to two like i remember when i started youtube and i'd get one new subscriber i'd be like holy shit like let's go it got up to 10 got up to 50 got up to 100 i was so fired up like that's so cool that 100 people give a shit what you have to say that that stuff is just as satisfying as it was when I got my 4,000 subscriber and when I'm gonna get my 10,000 subscriber. It's all the same. I still have the motivation to keep going and keep going because there's always something more to build. So start, do whatever you gotta do to start. Get your ass motivated, even if it's only for a small amount of time because as soon as you hit that first little milestone, that shit's like crack. It'll keep you running. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> Jesus, sorry, no. Uh, yeah, no, I would love to, I would love to. Now I'm familiar with the area because my sister actually uh, lived in Soho for a while. 
so I know the area pretty well. I'll definitely be there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, for letting me know. I'm super excited to meet him. All right. Just got a very interesting phone call. So um, as I've been speaking on this episode or this vlog, last vlog uh, about Dan being my mentor, I actually just got a call um, about he's coming into New York City. He's flying in. He lives in California. He's flying into New York City tonight, meeting up with some of his clients. He invited me to come meet him out for dinner in Soho. Soho is in New York. It's one of like the sections of New York. Uh, my sister lived there for a couple years, so I mean, I'm not really familiar with the area, but I know exactly where it is. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna meet him out there. He's gonna be meeting at some, I don't know, some place at like 8 p.m. with like three or four of his clients. So I'll go meet them, I'll go meet him, obviously. And I haven't like, I mean, I told her, I told Talia, her, his right-hand woman, that I'm in for the program. Uh, but I haven't like, we haven't made anything official, no contracts or money sent or anything like that. So it's gonna be awesome to get to meet him first and kind of see what it's about before I uh, before I actually dive in. So this is very cool. And it's awesome when you get something like this, you know, like I could totally see how someone outside of my position would think maybe it's like a scam and you're handing over a lot of money and like you don't know what you're getting in return. But when they make it, when someone sells something like this, like a product or service, and they make it very personalized, it makes you feel as a consumer, you know, that it is well worth the money and they're gonna take the time to care about what you get out of it. So uh, definitely looking forward to meeting him. We're supposed to get like five to 10 inches of snow tonight in like the Northeast area. So hopefully like that doesn't start until after I'm already home, but I'll let you guys know how it goes. So one of the things I'm working on right now <clears throat> is basically how I asked fellow followers, subscribers if they wanted to help me out this summer because I need help with Photoshop, video editing, blogging, SEO, those kind of things. And uh, I got a lot of responses. So I'm kind of organizing everything here, um, going through all the emails and DMs and stuff I got of all the people that reached out. And this is something I should have gotten on top of, but it's not my main priority right now because I don't need more content or anything like fantasy football wise until, until the season kind of kicks off or until you know we're at least like halfway through the summer so this is not my first priority but i do want to get back to all the people that reached out again if you watch this and you're one of the people that did reach out thank you so much uh it means a lot to me it means a lot that you would want to work with me I'm, you're not working for me you're working with me i'm just giving you a platform to be yourself and get your thoughts and, and feelings out and you know express yourself through whatever way you want to do it. So uh, again, thank you and I'm working on that and you will, if you didn't hear back from me by the time you're watching this, you will within the next week or so. So I did not forget about you. So the dinner went great, made it into Soho. It was awesome meeting Dan. I met uh, three of his clients that he's working with one-on-one -on -one now. One of them was a photographer, one of them was like a health and fitness coach, personal trainer almost and one of them runs an e-commerce business. So it's all people in different industries, different spaces that utilize different tactics and have to do a lot of different things in order to succeed in their field. And that dinner was like, you know, we sat there, from, I don't know, we we're there from like eight to 10 or eight to 10.30, super productive. It was just like a very intelligent conversation, not in like a corny, intelligent way. Oh, have you seen what happened in uh, Trump's administration in the Congress and shit like that? Intelligent in the way that like the people I was with ha have a very heavy like growth mindset right and it's all like people bouncing ideas off of each other business purposes and it's cool because like I don't have people like that around me where their business is like part of their lifestyle so it's like you talk business but it's also like you talking about personal stuff because it's integrated into your lifestyle and that's you know that's what I'm striving for and uh, it was good to be surrounded by people like that that kind of have similar goals to mine and are working towards like some kind of free like financial freedom yeah so dinner was awesome I am officially signed on with Dan as my mentor. He's actually flying me out to LA later this spring in May. I think it's May 3rd, May 2nd, May 3rd to May 6th. So I'll be out there staying with him for a, for like a long weekend. And it's basically just gonna be like a think tank, kind of like it was at dinner, but for days. And I think it's his birthday weekend, so I'm sure we'll be out celebrating, but everyone's gonna get together that I guess he works with or who's in the program. And we just kind of work together and bounce ideas off each other. And what I'm trying to do is set up myself so that, you know, like I, I know that the organic growth, and I think I'm an easy client for him, and I think it's gonna be a good success story for him. The organic growth, I think, is gonna come for me. The, the part that sucks is like my engagement and my growth comes from fantasy football, which is during the summer. And I really wanna turn that into a business and a profitable business and one where I can provide a lot of value and also get a lot of monetization 
in return, the organic growth is going to come from that. I have no doubt. Like I don't need help with that. And a lot of people starting off their business, that's where they struggle, right? It's hard to get followers, subscribers, things like that. And I feel like the market has kind of spoken back to me on that. And they do like it, it will grow that way. So what I need help with is how exactly do I scale? How do I outsource things, bring more people onto my team? What products should I sell? Like what's a good funnel strategy, marketing wise, all these different things. And he has a ton of different connections. Like when you get into the program, he will connect you with people that will help you the most, that he thinks will help you the most. We're gonna be getting on calls often. Like I have his phone number, we're gonna be talking all the time. So he's basically like a silent partner in my business over the next 90 to 100 days that will set me up for the summer and I will have a clear direction on where I wanna go based on the goals that I set. So we're getting on a call next week early to, it's like the initial kickoff call. Like obviously he has a good idea of where I am and what I wanna do based on the dinner, but uh, we're gonna get on a call and lay everything out. I'm gonna kind of spew everything that I have going on, all my goals, all the things I've been working on to him and then he's gonna help me organize it and get a clear direction where I should be like proceeding and where I should be looking to go with my uh, with my business. So it's definitely a risk. It's a lot of money that I'm putting into it, but I feel like, you know, scared money don't make no money. So if you're not putting back into yourself and investing into yourself, plus I could probably use it as a tax write off. But if you're not investing back into yourself or into your business, it's going to be very hard to scale and very hard to grow. So that's the update on that. And uh, next week is week 52. It's one year of vlogs. So I want to do something kind of special. Actually, well, you know what's crazy? My mom walks in my room. And I'm hearing like loud sounds from in the roof, and uh, we have an attic that I like forgot was even there. But there's something up there. There's like an animal or some shit up there. It's making mad noise. I think Steve's coming over tomorrow. We're gonna go investigate it. Like I'd be sitting there, I just hear like, like something's trapped up there. So we're gonna stick our heads in there. Hopefully not get eaten, bitten. Imagine I walked in that shit and it was just like a moose. I'd be like, damn. I don't know why I just went off on that tangent, but that's gonna be the start of next episode, I could already tell. We're gonna do it on Friday tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, thumb it up, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and we'll be back for week 52, one year of vlogs wrapping up. I really would like to do like a recap video of all the coolest shit that went on during the year. I honestly, I don't really have time for that shit. So, peace.